Hi everybody. Today's video is a laser guided bomb delivery tutorial. With additional notes on using the ground mapping features of the fire control radar to locate targets. In this video, I'll give you a brief overview of the target area, go through our fence in checks, additional weapons checks, locate the targets on the fire control radar, drop a bomb, and guide the bomb to impact. The target area today is a box that I've drawn on the HSD in the mission planning stage, right here. This box is in between our steer points four and five. Within the box, there's a north-south road marked by this line here. On that road is a artillery battalion somewhere along that road. It could be moving, could be stationary. We'll have to find it when we get there. I've also marked IP1 right here, which is a little bit farther east than our steer four. I'm gonna fly north, turn in that IP, to give us a little bit longer run in to locate the targets. Okay, we'll find the targets, drop a bomb, turn off so we don't overfly the target, guide the bomb to impact, and then come back out. Our first step, since we're a little bit farther away from the IP, is to fence in the jet. Make sure we turn our lights off, turn our IFF to low, make sure our countermeasures are enabled and that we have the appropriate countermeasure program selected. Master arm will leave it off for now. We'll turn that on when we get a little bit closer to the target. Laser arm will turn on. This is an important step. You can do it now or turn it on at the same time you turn on the master arm. But if we forget to turn on laser arm, we will not be able to guide the bombs to targets. We need to go through some additional weapons checks while we have time. I'm gonna select air to ground mode. Let's fire up our TGP, go from standby to air to ground, and we'll go to black hot today. Go over and select our SMS page, take a look. See that we have four GBU-12s on the wings. They're set up for single delivery with a single ripple. This ripple spacing has no effect since we're only dropping one bomb. Okay. We also have an arming delay of three seconds. It's probably a little low for our planned level drop at 18,000 feet, so we're going to change that. Hit the control button, go to our first arming delay selected here, and we'll just change this to six seconds all the way around. Nose and tail fusing. You can see our arming delay changed to six seconds. This release angle here is only applicable if we're lofting bombs. We're not doing that today, so we're going to do that. Okay. We also need to set up our laser for this flight. We do that by hitting the list button on the ICB. We'll hit zero for miscellaneous and hit five for laser. You can see that we have our TGP laser code set as 1688 currently. Our laser search track code set at 1688, and our air to ground laser mode set as training. We need to change some of these. Our laser code on the bomb, which is set up in the loadout screen in 2D, is 1511. So we need to make sure the TGP is broadcasting that same code. We'll dauber up and select the TGP code. Hit 1511. Press enter. The laser search track code is the code that the TGP would look for if we selected laser search track mode. We're not doing that today, so we'll leave that alone. We'll dauber down and select the air to ground laser mode. Currently it's in training. We want it to be in combat. Selected that, and we'll just hit zero on the ICP, and you can see how combat is now flashing. As soon as it stops, we know that the air-to-ground laser is in combat mode. We can also see the laser, laser time set to 12 seconds. That is the uh, approximate time before impact that the laser will automatically start lasing. For GBU-12s, which are Paveway 2 variants, we want that to be between 8 and 15 seconds. GBU-12s have what we call knock-knock guidance. That is not proportional guidance. What happens is, as soon as the bomb starts guiding, 
the fins only have two positions, full deflection one way or full deflection the other way. If we laze for too long, that full deflection actually bleeds energy from the bomb and it'll fall short. So eight to 15 seconds is pretty good, depending on your drop speed, your altitude. There's a number of factors that can affect that. Today, we'll leave it at 12 seconds. We'll dauber left to exit the laser screen. Okay, and that should finalize our weapons checks. I'm gonna exit air to ground mode. Put us back in nav mode, and I'm going to continue to fly north to the IP, and then turn in on the target area. I've skipped some of the ingress to save time, but you can see that we're established on a roughly westerly course, right about at our IP1. Got a good view of the target area, we just need to go find some targets. Let's start by entering air to ground mode. You can see we have the air-to-ground fire control radar pulled up on our left MFD and our HSD on our right MFD. We'll need to use these in conjunction to make sure that we can actually find the targets. You'll note that as we move the cursor on the fire control radar, it also moves the cursor on the HSD. Let's go ahead and cursor zero, put us back at steer point four. We know that our targets are on this north-south road somewhere. We need to go find that. Let's move the cursor up to that road. Here we go. And we'll start looking along that road for some sort of contact. There's a couple dots up there. Let's see what those are. There's kind of some blobs over there in a little bit. Not sure those really look like air to ground targets. We'll take a look. Zoom in. Nope, that's a city. So we'll keep looking. We'll zoom back out. Oh, well, there's a target there. Check this out. That seems to be a lone track. That's probably not a battalion. So let's zoom back out. Nice big dot right here. Let's see what that is. That's still along the road here, right? See us checking us out. We'll zoom in. See that? That looks a little suspicious for any sort of city. That's not a random clumping of buildings. We'll zoom in a little bit more. Got some nice little rows here. Let's check this out. Let's see what's going on here. And sure enough, see, that is a tank. And there's another one. So that's our group of targets right there. All right, let's pick one of these at random. Let's just go with this tank right here. And we'll TMS up. That sets a point track and gives us a target. You can even see it in the HUD. It's right there. I'm gonna unpause and we'll start our ingress on the target. At this point, we'll want to turn master arm on so we get proper CCRP queuing in the HUD. See the CCRP line comes up. So we're going to steer right at this line and we'll throttle up as well. We want to get moving nice and quick so we can get a little bit longer trajectory on the bomb, a little bit more separation. See that I'm about a minute 20 from our First queue, which is the loft queue, uh, closing on 17 miles to the target. Right. Nearing Mach 0 0.8, still Angels 1.8. Just kind of refine the CPCRP queue to make sure we're in line. Let's fast forward a bit here, save you some time. All right, I paused it here. We're about 20 seconds from our loft queue. I'll show you a couple more things. See, critical feature on the TGP is we have this little L here. That L that the laser is on, it is armed and it can fire. If I pull the first trigger detent, 
that'll actually start flashing. That activates the laser manually. I'll let it go for now. Right, let's unpause. Find our all line a little bit here. See, I'm at Mach 0 0.85, 10 seconds from our loft queue. You can see the queue coming down right there. That's the loft queue. We're 15 seconds from drop. Now, I'm not going to start holding pickle until about two to three seconds before delivery. Okay, and pickle. You can see the flashing L on the HUD. Can you hear the bomb come off? I'm going to turn left and throttle back a little bit. The reason I'm doing this is because I don't want to overfly the target. I want to avoid that if at all possible. Overflying the target gives any shore ed, uh, down at the target site a really good opportunity to shoot you down. You turn to the left a little bit and then turn to the right. See I guided the bomb the entire way to impact. The TGP automatically lays the target and the target is destroyed. At this point, I can turn back around, exit our kill box, return to the IP, locate more targets, and drop more bombs. That concludes our tutorial for today. Thanks for watching.